Well, I'll start off first. Uh, you know, through free agency, what we try to do is we acquired a lot of players, but the, the whole point of it was to be able to go into the draft with the most flexibility, like to be able to take the best available. So I thought we did that. We went out and tacked some positions in need. You know, we uh, took care of the uh, defensive backs, uh, uh, fixed the offensive line uh, as best we could. And so I'm, ex I'm excited where we're at. I think we did a lot of good things, and um, it really frees us up for the draft. And so we can go multiple ways with that first pick. So with that, I'll just open it up. Is it, are there, do you feel like there are any realistic um, options at this point to trade with another team, that quarterback, based on what's potentially out there? Uh, I haven't had any conversations recently with, with teams about that. I think we'll explore every option, whether it's the draft or trades. It's just uh, the team's got to call you, and no one's call, called us you know, recently about that. How much easier was it to go through the free agency process having a somewhat full offseason? I mean, last year you got here pretty early, but having a scouting department in place, how much easier was that? I think it was huge. Just you know, to be able to spend time with, with coach, his staff, you learn your staff, who, who can you trust as scouts? You know, who are the guys that you can really lean on to evaluate? And I thought we really did a good job. You know, the addition of, of Dan Morgan really helped this year. You know, Pat Stewart, um, all of the guys, all of our pro guys, they, they wrote a ton of reports. You know, last year, you know, we didn't quite have the volume that we were comfortable with. And so it was a real emphasis going into it this year. Hey, let's beef up this, uh, the scouting reports so we can make informed decisions. And uh, it really allowed us to do a lot of different things during the draft having that. Last time we talked, you said Sam's got to get a lot better in order for him to kind of hold on to that spot. And you said you were going to be really aggressive in getting a quarterback, but obviously it hasn't happened yet. Maybe it will. Who knows? Maybe you. But uh, are you comfortable with him as your starter if that's where you can? Yeah, the whole key is bringing Sam along. You know, we threw him in last year, kind of limited OTAs and not everything that we had. Um, you know, we have to develop our own guys and PJ Walker as well. But I think we will look to add uh, to the group as well. I think we need that's one emphasis going into this, whether it's through the draft, trade, whatever we may be, we're going to add to the to the room. Are you closer to keeping Sam today than you were like three months ago, maybe? Yeah, Sam's on, Sam's on the roster as I sit here right now. He's he's on the roster. He's uh, you know he's in the lead for that job. You know we want him to take it and run with it. Uh, but we're going to add a lot of competition to that room. The whole. Emphasis is to stabilize that quarterback position and play winning football, and that's what we're working towards. Uh, do you have a better idea of, of this quarterback class having been out on the road with Matt this week? Yeah. yeah, you know when you when you watch guys on tape, you can get a feel for you know how they play, how they move in the pocket. The important thing for pro days is number one, you can ju you can judge their arm, like the velocity on the ball, their touch on the ball, and then number two, how do they interact with their teammates. You know, who's bringing the energy to the room? Who's, who's got the leadership style? And I thought we saw that out of all three guys we saw this week. And, you know, people asked why we didn't go to, to Ritter's, you know, pro day. Uh, we've, we spent a lot of time with him at the, at the uh, Senior Bowl, at the Combine. We know he's got the leadership to him. So it's important for us to spend time on the road this, this week uh, with those three guys that we did. Did you get a chance to go to dinner with any of them? We kind of heard about Tomlin uh, having dinner with Willis. Did you guys get a chance to? We, we tried to with uh, Corral, and then they're, they're so booked up. You know, we did a late flight, and we were able to fly into town. It was, it was tough to get with them, but we did meet with them on the side. But we didn't do, like, a formal dinner. Have you talked to Cam, and where do you guys sit? Matt's talked to Cam. So I've reached out a couple times. Uh, Matt talked to him. You know, the thing with Cam, it's got to be a fit for us, and it's got to be a fit for him just as well. I mean, he's looking for a certain uh, opportunity, and... Uh, you know, the, the door is still open for us. We're, we're very open to Cam. We'll see where it goes. He knows where we stand. I think he and Matt had a really good conversation from my understanding. And so, uh, yeah, we'll just see where it goes. Does having one pick in the top 125 make you more inclined to go for an immediate impact player versus a, a project quarterback or something like that? Just, how important is it to hit on that pick knowing you only have the one in the top 125? Yeah. It, that's why we did what we did in free agency, so we can have those options. You absolutely want to hit on that pick, and it's hard to pass on, whether it's a you know a cornerstone left tackle, whether it's a pass rusher. But quarterbacks are hard to find, and sometimes you have to swing to take and take a shot at these guys. And if you miss, you can't you know stop swinging. You have to take a shot again, and uh, it's the most important position on the field. So 
there's a lot of ways we can go. Quarterback is definitely one of them, and we do like these guys. What do you feel like you all are, are done right now, as of right now, in free agency, or are there other position groups you may still want to target? I feel really good about where we're at as a roster right now. I thought we filled a lot of depth on the offensive line, linebacker, along the defensive line, especially in the defensive backfield. I think we're a much better roster right now than we were a year ago. We're much, we don't just have the front line guys, front line guys, we have depth. And that was the biggest, you know, thing going into this. And we have guys that are real pros and real, you know, leaders. And uh, so I, I like where we're at. We do need to add a couple more spots, you know, quarterback uh, being one. Uh, if we can add competition to left tackle, we'll do that as well, or as a uh, pass rusher. The, the, the thing about the offensive line is with Brady Christensen, he gives us so much versatility. And with Bozeman and Elf line, and then, uh, you know, obviously Corbett. We were watching tape yesterday uh, of the Rams, and Corbett was, like, standing out. We were really, like, happy to see him play that well. Yeah, obviously, we liked him when we signed him. And then uh, Taylor Moten, you know, just that rock on the right side. So. We like where we're at right now. We're excited about this this year and where this is going to go with this team. Can you expand upon what Bozeman and Corbett do well and why you thought they'd be upgrading ideal fits here? I think they're tough guys. I think they play square. You know, last year we were, we were like the quicker, getting off the ball, attacking type. These guys can sit back and play square. They can build that wall up the middle. You know, I think last year you saw, you know, Sam and Cam had guys in their face a lot, way too often. I think these guys can sit in there, play square. And they give us like a, a, a toughness and a, a stoutness that we lacked last year. And I know you said you want to add depth at tackle, but could you field a, a starting five offensive line group that you feel confident in right now? With the I feel really good about the offensive line right now. And if we have a chance to add one more, we'll do that. Scott, can you kind of take us through the, the Sean, you know, your involvement in that, and why do you feel like that didn't work out? And you know, and then moving on from that. Yeah. The thing about Deshaun, I know it's like a really sensitive matter. Um, really not going to get into that today, just out of respect for everyone involved. But um, that's that's where we're standing. I'm not going to get into it today. Was it disappointing that it didn't work out? Or? You know what? Uh, it's probably more high profile than a lot of other times. There's a lot of opportunities that don't work out. It's just how we bounce back and what's what's next. And we're always focused about moving forward, not about what we lost. Did you stand though on the vetting process? And did you all try to get in touch with any of the victims or the alleged victims? Yeah, I'm not, not going to go into the details today, um, but we did our work. Scott, where would you rank Kenny Pickett and Malik Willis in last year's quarterback draft class? You know, I hate to really do that. Uh, I don't want to give up too much uh, information prior to the draft because I think it kind of tips our hand. But uh, uh, we like these guys. You know, we obviously like some guys last year as well, but we like this group. What does the signing of Deontay Foreman do with Christian McCaffrey? How you guys are going to use him? And then likewise with uh, bringing Xavier Woods for Jeremy Chief. I'm, I'm excited about what he brings. You know, last year we had, you know, three explosive backs. And I think we needed someone with a little more power, a little more size. And that will complement us um, in Christian's run style. And we, when we need to finish games, when it's third and one, we can put the big body in and wear guys down and push the pile. So that was an emphasis going into it is adding that bigger back. And when you go back and look at what Dante did last year, uh, I think he fits that mold of exactly what we were looking for. Xavier on the other side, kind of, what does he allow you guys to do with Chen? Uh, he, he's gonna, he's really good from all the information that we have and everything that we know about him. He's really good on the back end communicating. And really, last year, that's probably one of the the missing links on that in the backfield. There's there's some communication issues. And I think Xavier's going to bring that. And I think if you do that, you can do a lot of different things with Chin, with his versatility. He can drop down, cover tight ends. He can play in the box. And adding Justin Burris, who we just signed back, uh, I really like our, our safety group at this point. Still, the door is still open for Cam. Under what criteria or scenario could you see Cam on this roster? I think it has to fit, like I said, both of us. It's not just us saying, hey, Cam, come on back. You know, he's going to want to come back. He's got to like the role and the room and the situation. And so uh, it, it's really a, a, just kind of a fit for both of us. And like I said, the door is open. Uh, love to add someone with his leadership, you know, his toughness. He brought so much to this team last year and stabilized this during a really hard time. And I think he's a, a really special person. What, what would that role be if you did come back? Is it a, as a backup? I think anyone you bring in, it's you're competing. The best player is going to play. 
Pat, you said last year you, you didn't want to get in the habit of doing a lot of the structure. Yeah. You just didn't want to kick that can. You guys did a number of them again this year. We did. And why was that important? And it looks like it left you kind of behind the eight ball towards next year's cap. Will that be prohibited next year? Well, I think there's two things that go into it. I think we, the, we expect the cap to go up next year. And then number two is the flexibility that it gives us this year, the ability to go out and plug all these holes that we had, build the depth on our roster, stabilize this offense and defensive line, which I said, you know, we're really excited about what we've done. And then during the season, it gives us the flexibility to make the trades. You know, guys will look to unload contracts midway through. And we, we were very active during the season, and we want that flexibility. And then if a player pops at some point, we have the room to fit him in this year. And we do hate to kick the can down the road, you know, like you say. But uh, this is this was a very um, kind of thought out process of why we did this this year. Does it kind of go to, to the moves we saw you make last year that every year you, you feel like your window's open, kind of, so to speak? Our, our whole goal is to win the NFC South every year. We want to compete every year. And I think that's a, that's a mindset that we take. I think we're, you know, two steps closer this year, not just one step. I think we're two steps closer uh, to you know, really competing for this NFC South. And so with the, all the guys we brought in, I think we're right there. If we can get the quarterback position stabilized, we're going to be competing for it. How do you assess an edge rusher with Hassan Reddick out? Uh, obviously, he got a lot of money. I'm happy for, for Hassan. I mean, he's a special player. Uh, we went back and got Marquise Haynes. And, uh, we're expecting Frankie Louvu and all those guys to step up and take the, that role. You know, that's a, it's a good opportunity for those guys. And we've seen them do it in glimpses. And I think the more they play, the longer they play and develop their technique, the better they're going to be. How much different will it be in terms of how you deploy that defensive front as opposed to just expecting those couple of guys to replace what? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, Coach Snow will have a pretty good idea. I don't want to get too far into that. I'll let the coaches speak on that. But they're going to put them in a position where they can make plays and single them up and let them use their athleticism to win. The Ed Rusher talked about possibly adding, would that be potentially a starting caliber edge rusher y'all are looking for? Yeah, it could, be, it could be an edge rusher. It could be a five tech. To add one more body on that, in that defensive line would be uh, a significant upgrade. Kind of a twofold question. Have you ever seen an offseason like this in the NFL is so crazy. And how tough is it to stay pat and be diligent and for, keep your discipline and not like panic because you see guys moving everywhere? Yeah, I think this is probably one of the wilder off season, especially with the, the quarterbacks and all the big moves. Um, I do think we were aggressive. I think we've acquired a lot of uh, good players on this roster. Uh, but you do have to be disciplined. You have to do your work and you have to not just be re reactive and jump at something. You have to really be Hey, know what the landscape is, what's happening next, who are the quarterbacks, who are these pass rushers that may go, and then make the smart decision at that time to pursue it. So you do need discipline. The time you spent pursuing Watson impact um, missing out on any players that you might have gone after? No, they're independent of each other. And that's what having some of that, that cap room, those restructures allowed us to do. We could still do business over here while you went down that road. How much cap room do you guys have left, and do you plan on using that before the draft, maybe waiting until training camp to see if any players are cut? Like, how much of what, how much do you have left, and how much do you want to use? Well, without giving like a specific number, it's still very fluid. Uh, I've told multiple guys in here, we hold money back. You know, you may sit there and look at a number on the sport track and all these things. We hold nine million back for um, you know the draft picks. We hold several more million back for injuries and signing guys during the season. So uh, we do have some money, um, and we're ready to uh, to make a move if something happens. And there's an opportunity out there. You guys still talking to Gilmore? Yeah. Matter of fact, uh, Dan Morgan and I and our wives were at dinner. Um, was it last Friday night? And Steph came up and met us and brought his son up. And you know, we just had dinner and we talked, and uh, the door's still open. Plan deal or just sort of? No, it's you know it was just right up the street, and uh, he had just gotten into town, and um, it was kind of a random meeting, and he came up, and we talked, and it was a really good talk, and much like Cam, he's looking for the right situation, and uh, you know these guys are highly competitive guys. They want to start, they want to win, they want to compete at the highest level, um, you know. But the door is open for us.
Scott, you said um, Sam is, is, quote, in the lead for the start job. What things are you guys, in particular, having him work on that you want to see him improve before next season? Well, I think once Coach McAdoo gets with him, you know, they, they've been talking by phone. We haven't spent a lot of time with him yet, like in classrooms or anything, just because you're not allowed at this point. Uh, a lot of it will be, you know, speeding up the processing, issue, you know, the processing and getting the ball out quick, uh, eliminating some pre-snap, you know, uh, reads. You can do, do some things that way. Just making the right decision, just growing as a quarterback. And Ben has a history of developing quarterbacks, you know, whether it's Green Bay in New York, and we plan on him doing that with Sam. You, you may have said the answer, so I probably know if you did, but do you view any of the, uh, the quarterbacks as day one starters in the draft, or do you think that they'll take some time to have them? Yeah, without giving away too much um, draft information, I think all these guys are capable of being starters. Um, I think you, you know once you get them, you develop a plan of how you want to uh, deal with them. And we're starting that process now. Hey, what can we do? Ideally. Every quarterback, no matter what it would be, whoever it is, would sit you know, for a little while and learn. However, when it's time, it's time, and they'll let you know. Uh, we saw some pretty hurt feelings uh, among some other teams that pursued Watson. Did you have to kind of call Sam or did Matt? How did those conversations go? No, we, we haven't talked to Sam since then. I know he's been in the building. I know Ben's met with him and Matt's met with him. Uh, I didn't call him. Um, you know, this, this is just part of being a pro and part of uh, part of the process. And you know, Sam, Sam would be the first to tell you he needs to, um, you know, play good quality football, and that's what we're going to do with him. We're going to get him to that level. What are your thoughts about the NFC South right now with all the movements in the quarterback in New Orleans? Um, like, yeah, I guess what's, what's it again, but you know, coming back and the situation going on in Atlanta. What's your views right now on the NFC South? You know, I think uh, obviously <laughs> Tom Brady coming back through a curveball at us. You know, um, I, I, you know, I, I think as long as we get our team right, we're going to compete for it. You know, like I said, our goal is to compete for the NFC South, and we're going to give it every shot we have. You know, it doesn't matter what the other teams are doing. It's just we're going to focus on our team and getting ourselves right and get us in a position where we can win consistently. Any quarterbacks of free agency or trade still out there that you guys would be interested in? You know, we're monitoring that. Uh, nothing that we're going to do uh, immediately. When you guys are all going after a high profile player like Sean Watson, was that due for negotiations with you, ramp it up, make it, you know, emphasize more trying to get that player? Was it due when you're competing within your division for a higher profile player like that? You know, you do see that. Like, some players are attracted, like, when you go after it. Uh, the one thing I've learned through this process of, you know, talking to a lot of agents, um, they like the aggressiveness that we have. They like that we're going for it. We like, they like the fact we have an owner that's aggressive. They know this is a great place to live and a, a place that should be very desirable and a place people want to be. So that's one thing. That's one of the feedback or some of the feedback that I've gotten. But I'm excited, like I said, about where this is at. Scott, how much more complicated is the GM's job now that there are multiple instances of players kind of dictating where they want to go and kind of almost that NDA model, people right. say. How much more difficult does that make what you do? Uh, it does. It, what it makes you do is that have a more personal relationship with the players, you know, be able to be on the front end of it and kind of be proactive about it and, you know, kind of if there's an issue that's brewing, eliminate that or at least try to – communicate the best you can about what's going on. Um, and that you are seeing that a lot more often. And that's why you see some of these bigger trades as well. And they can dictate where they want to go, especially if you have a no trade clause. So you have to be smart about how you structure contracts. You have to be, um, like I said, really uh, tuned into the player. And you also have to have a lot of contacts around the NFL. If it does fall apart, you have to be able to uh, be ready to move. You said, I think you said these agents have been impressed that you all are going for it. Right. So how do you kind of weigh that as you look at a potential quarterback in the draft from a class that a lot of people don't think is real strong versus making a move on one of the few remaining veteran quarterbacks still out there? No, I think the whole, our whole focus is to get the whole team right. I think last year we came in, kind of reset that defense and built that defense. We have some pieces this year. 
we've rebuilt this offense. We have a you know a better, much better offensive line. We've got the running backs. We've got the skill position at receiver. Eventually, it's going to get to a point where you can drop a quarterback in, and you guys just take off. And that's what we're building towards. And I think we're a lot closer this year than we than we have been uh, in the last year or two. Are there, are the guys you saw this week of that ability that you can just drop in like that? I, I, again, I. I'd love to be able to say that. I just want to protect our team a little bit with the information about those specific players. Uh, but ideally, you know, if you have a young guy that you can drop in there, that's the most cost-efficient way to do it. Surround them with veteran talent. Have a young quarterback on a on a cost-efficient court on a cost-efficient contract. That's a great way to build a team. That's we did that in Seattle. That's probably the right way to build it. You know, draft and develop and. Uh, you know, that'd be a really good plan for us moving forward, but we're open to all options. Any more trips planned for to visit college players or pro days or interview players in person in the next couple weeks? We're going to bring in 30 players, and I'm sure we'll bring in, you know, I know we're going to bring in uh, more quarterbacks, more tackles. We're going to visit with them. This is a real ongoing process for us. This isn't like, okay, we went to a pro day, we did the tape, we visited with them, we're shutting the book, we can make a decision. This, we're going to bring this all the way up to the draft. We're going to keep learning about these guys, who they are, how they process, how they think, what's their makeup, and that's what we're going to do for the next month or so. From the standpoint of building the complete team you're talking about, was it a good thing then not to get Watson from that standpoint? Uh, you know, that, that's a good question. I think we would have done a lot of these moves with him, you know, had we acquired him. Like I said, we were operating independently. So a lot of these moves would have, would have taken place. Um, the one thing, I, I, I tell you what, two of the things I was really excited about is bringing back you know, DJ and signing Dante. Like, that, that's what we want to do as an organization is draft, develop, and then if they do it the right way and they come out and they perform, we're going to reward them and keep them here. These are the guys that we want in the building. I think there's a history of that. You know, prior to me ever being here, this is you know, Mr. Tepper and, and Matt Rule when they did it with McCaffrey. And you know we've done it. We did it last year. We did it this year. We'd love to be able to do that going forward. As long as we manage the money right, we want to take care of our own guys. Is Brian we'll do, Burns. We'll do a couple more. Is, is Brian Burns kind of like the next thing of, the, of that ilk, or is there just more on the table as far as that? Yeah, there, there's always more on the table, but, but Brian would be one of those priorities, like moving forward. He's the guy that's come out and produced for us. Uh, I really like the kind of the leader he's becoming and the man he is. So he would be, you know, one of those guys that we'll definitely try to work on. Is is Glenn pick up the fifth option? Uh, yeah. Scott, now that you've had a, a year to, to team build with Matt, um, what have you learned about the way Matt uh, wants to build a team and how that aligns with your vision of doing stuff? Yeah, I think we're very aligned. You know, we we believe in building it up front. You know, we want to build it on defense, but offense and defense align, and obviously quarterback uh, is a uh, part of this. But he's very aggressive, and I think that fits my nature as well. We're aggressive as a staff, as an organization. That's our philosophy, you know. And I think uh, a lot of that comes down from the top. You know, it's Mr. and Mrs. Tepper. Like, let's go. Let, like, let's build this the right way, and let's be aggressive about how we do this. You're not quite there yet. Kind of saw this happen in Seattle, and he just mentioned it. Like, building a, a team is easiest and best with a young quarterback because you're on his rookie salary. But there's also like 12 quarterbacks in the NFL that are really good, and therefore they're now commanding like half a billion dollars. So how do you get a quarterback, keep a quarterback, pay a quarterback, and then build a roster around them? And what's that philosophy for you guys? You know, I think every time, like, if you draft one and you, they're there for five years, then all of a sudden you're paying them, right now, what is it, 40, 50 million dollars a year. That's a huge amount of your cap space. So how, where, do you, where are you going to take from to, to build your team? And so you have to be very strategic about who you sign back. And you know, there's obviously value of position. Like you want to keep your left tackle. You want to keep your pass rushers. But there are times you have to go cost efficient on certain positions. And you know, uh, I think uh, some teams you, know, can, you can take from, like, say, guard or linebacker. But you have to be smart about how you spend your money. And it really does uh, limit what you can do. Uh, so obviously that, that rookie quarterback is, that is huge. Uh, it's hard for me. <laughs> I don't know if it's good. You know, it's good for the good for the players. Uh, you reward the guys who perform for you. Uh, uh, it's a, that's a hard question to answer. You know, I'd like to say it's. I'd like to say it's hard. Um, 
but it's uh, that's, that's a tough one because it, it, it just eats up so much of your cap space and eats up so many resources. It's hard to do. All right. Thank you.